I had an affair with my ex-wife after 23 years of marriage. I found out that I'm still in love with my ex-wife and want to be with her. I feel horrible leaving my wife and four adult children. I feel held hostage to try and do the right thing and stick the marriage out. I'm no longer happy in our marriage. There is no true connection. I truly am in love, connected to my ex, who never got remarried after she divorced me for being unfaithful to her 30 years ago. I hope you don't mind me being honest since you've asked the question. This is what I call a um, high school reunion type of affair. It's strange how when we are with someone, regardless of when it is in life, um, a lot of times at reunions this happens because people will reconnect with people they really had strong feelings, love for when they were in high school or they were much younger. And now they're older. And so they look back and they realize that that was true love. They finally had what they wanted, but something happened and for whatever reason, uh, that relationship failed. Connections that we have with people, those attachments that were created, never fade. They actually are still there, which is why it is dangerous to begin to hook back up with previous lovers, mates, whatever. Let me tell you something about infatuation. Infatuation, which I think you may be infatuated here, infatuation is nothing more than the projection of my imagination on another person of all of my needs and desires and wants being fulfilled. There is good reason that relationships like with your ex um, went by the wayside. And the problem is when you reignite that attachment you once had, you forget all the reasons that relationship went away. Hey, dude, you had an affair on that one also, just like you're having an affair on this one. But you're going to imagine what happened in that relationship back there 30 years ago. You're young. You're more vibrant. There seems to be more potential. Life is wonderful. There is probably no affair more powerful than an affair with someone you hook back up with after 30 years or after 25 years. Because all you can see are two young kids. You know, you see yourself younger. You know you were in love. And yet you still had an affair. And you don't remember, I promise you, you do not remember the things that weren't good. You will only remember the good things. To me, those affairs are the best example of going back and again, your mind projecting to another time, you were younger, you were more vibrant. Yeah, it's going to be incredibly appealing. And you will not have any feelings for your current wife. Typically, when I see people hook up with someone from their past, like this situation where she divorced you, and by the way, you still cheated on her, so that the bigger issue to me isn't the woman. You're looking for external circumstances thinking that's what's going to make you happy. It ain't going to be what makes you happy. What's going to make you happy is being the right type of person. And I know you have no feelings for your mate now. But I can also tell you that even if you had feelings for your mate, your current mate, you're not going to be able to remember that because now all you can come up with are the reasons you don't want this person because this looks far more appealing. If you want, and I can promise you, your desire for your current wife can come back, but you're going to have to do a couple of things if you were to do that because I've done it so many times. First, you have to begin to work with somebody and really looking at your ex. And you've got to begin to process and you've got to begin to come up with all of the reasons. You've got, I mean, just processing. Eventually what you'll find is if you talk about that person with a therapist week after week after week, what's going to happen is you'll begin to gain perspective. Second, you're going to need to get rid of the resentments you can have for your current mate. Some of those are real. Some of those are imagined. 
But resentments are huge desire killers. So if you get your heart disconnected from here and see that really may not be a best choice for you so that at least you're thinking with your big head instead of your little head, then you get rid of the resentments you have toward your current mate and you forgive. And then you'll go to a neutral state where you don't think negatively of your current spouse, but you may not, you know, at least you're not, you may not have desire, but the other, you know, you're also not pushed away by her. And then in about two to three months from that point, desire comes back um, as you begin to really see them differently. But if you don't get rid of the resentments, if you don't get disconnected from the first one, you're right. It's really hard. I think you know, a recommendation would be get some help. Um, you don't want to blow everybody's life up. You really don't. And I think I can pretty much promise you what you're thinking and what you're seeing right now is an illusion. It's easy to want what we don't have. There's plenty of motivation to do things to try to get what we want. It's a far bigger challenge to learn after we get married how to live with somebody that we don't want. When we want what we don't have, we'll make sacrifices to get there. When we have who we don't want, which happens as those resentments build up over time or disappointments or hurts, then there's a different type of commitment. When things are good in a marriage, what you're going to find is you can be committed to a relationship because you love what you've got. But when things are harder, you need to be committed for your kids and other things, even though you don't know what you feel about your mate, but you're still committed. And when things are just horrible, you just stay committed because you're committed.